The other situation we encounter with automotive testing is the A to B bus. This often comes into play more when you are testing car microphone arrays rather than speakers, as you need to capture the signal via the car's internal microphones rather than your own measurement microphones. Most modern cars contain microphone arrays for everything from voice control to active noise cancellation. I mentioned earlier that Soundcheck is great at getting signals into and out of any device, and this is no exception. Soundcheck can communicate directly with the A2B bus to enable you to make all the same measurements that you would with a conventional wired setup. I'm now going to hand over to Mark Latshaw, who will demonstrate how we can measure MEMS microphones via an A2B interface. Hey, my name is Mark, and I'll be demonstrating an A2B application for automotive testing. A2B is a high bandwidth, bi-directional digital audio bus. A2B is capable of transporting data, control information, clock, and power using a single two-wire, unshielded twisted pair cable. In an automotive application, this can be used with microphones for voice recognition, communications, or active noise cancellation, including road noise cancellation. There are some major benefits of using A2B. Multiple devices can be daisy-chained together. A2B also supplies power to all devices in the chain, so local power supplies aren't needed. Since only a single twisted pair of cables are required, the total weight and complexity of the system can be much lower. In contrast, traditional wiring would require multiple connections, power supplies, which all use heavy copper wire. With lighter vehicles and higher fuel economy, these are all important design considerations. In this example, I'm using an analog device's A2B sound card. This sound card is connected to an 802425 eval board. This eval board has TRS line in and line out, so I have two line ins and two line outs available. I'm then connected to two boards over here, each of them with two PDM MEMS microphones. So in total, I have four MEMS microphone inputs, two line inputs, and two line outputs. We're also connected over here via USB to my computer. Using an analog device's program, Sigma Studio, I can set up the configuration for these devices. I'm also using an Audio Connect and an SC amp connected to a speaker over here so I can play out pink noise to test these microphones. Now we'll take a look at Sigma Studio by Analog Devices. So in this software, we can set the configuration to match what our actual hardware is. So I have my sound card configured, it's connected to the 802425, and then I can select which channels are available. So again, on this setup, I'll have four microphone inputs, two line inputs, and then two line outputs. This will be dependent on the configuration of your specific setup. If your hardware is different, you'll need to set it in Sigma Studio to match what you're using. Now that it's configured, we can set it to the device, make sure that it matches the settings. And what I've done in this is using ASIO streams for my audio channels. So we'll take a look now in Soundcheck. If we go into Setup Hardware, we'll be able to see that I now have six ASIO inputs into ASIO outputs, which are using the analog device's A2B sound card. I also have my two inputs and outputs for my Audio Connect. In Setup Calibration, we'll open up the table, and you can see for the input side, I've created four input signal paths that are all tied to the microphone. So inputs one through four will correlate to the MEMS mics one through four on these boards over here. And on the output side, my source speaker is configured to play out of my audio connect out of the speaker here. So we'll save this. And now if I run the sequence, it will play signal out and record in on my four microphones. Great, so as you can see there, we had an RTA with four discrete input channels. We were reading the four microphones on my setup over there, and we were able to put these into memory, set limits on them, and test them whenever we want. 
further in a soundtrack sequence. Once the data is captured via ATB, we can test it the same as if it was from any other source. For example, if these microphones are going to be used for noise cancellation, we could then write a sequence for that specific use case.